All right, we're coming up on the end of May. Uh, I think I'm right, correct? Yeah. And <laughs> which means we're approaching halftime. <clears throat> and I know that everyone set goals at the beginning of the year. I know I did. And I also know that with a few exceptions, most of us are probably not on track to hit our goals. I mean, in December and January, when we were creating and finalizing those goals for 2020, none of us expected to have this worldwide pandemic pop up in February and to be shut down for the most part uh, for a period of three months. So that said, uh, there is nothing less important in life than the score at halftime. <laughs> nothing. And if you're a sports fan like me, uh, I'll use the New England Patriots Atlanta Falcons Super Bowl as a perfect example of this. Uh, three years ago, four years ago, I forget when it was, uh, Atlanta was winning that game 28 to 3 at halftime. 28 to 3. A lot of people turned the game off because, I mean, that's a blowout, right? And New England came back and won the game. Now, does Atlanta get a trophy for leading at halftime? No. Do they get bonus checks for leading at halftime? No. Um, there is nothing less important in life than the score at halftime. So if you are like most people and you're not tracking your goal for the year, uh, just remember, it's not even halftime yet. And what do we do at halftime? We make adjustments. We look at our game plan and we see what went well, uh, what didn't go well, uh, what are the obstacles that are standing between us and our goals? If you took a piece of paper, and on the left side of the paper, I just want you to write the word grow vertically. Make it large so it covers the entire sheet of paper. G-R-O-W. <clears throat> G is for your goal. What was your goal at the beginning of the year? Now, if your goal was to close 36 sales, for example, and your average commission check is 10,000, so your goal was 360,000 GCI, awesome. And in order to be on track, where would you need to be at halftime? Matt, Nadine, you're the math teacher here. What's half of 36? Oh, half of 36 is 18. There we go. So if I'm on track to hit my goal, then I'm closing 18 deals by the end of June. Now, the R stands for reality. And the reality is, how many deals have I closed? Let's say that it's the, end, it's the middle of May, and I'm tracking... 10 closings for the first half of the year. I need to be at 18 and I'm at 10. Okay, reality. It is what it is. Now, O is the obstacles. That's what's standing between you and your goals. And list them all, uh, low inventory, <clears throat> Uh, pandemic, health crisis, uh, people are still not comfortable going out and looking at homes. Uh, sellers are waiting to put their home on the market. List every single obstacle you can think of. And W is way forward. In other words, R is reality. Reality is where you are. G is your goal. R is where you're at right now. That's the reality of where you're at. Jim Collins in his book, Good to Great, says, I do not deny the brutal facts of my reality. So if your reality is not so good, cool. Now, 
Andy Andrews took that statement or that that quote and added to it. And I like Andy Andrews version, which is I do not deny the brutal facts of my current reality. I deny its finality. Just because this is my reality doesn't mean it's my finality. W, way forward. So that's my plan in order to move forward. That is my plan in order to move closer to my goal. In other words, what am I going to do to start removing these obstacles? All right. Now, <clears throat> beginning with the end in mind, if I'm at 10 closings and it's the end of June and I need 26 closings in order to hit my goal for the year, then in the last six months of the year, I need to average just over four closings per month. Okay. If it takes eight listings, bless you. If it takes eight listings to close four list to close four sales, then what do I need to do in order to go get eight listings? Well, if my conversion ratio is 50%, I need to go on 16 listing appointments. If I need to go on 16 listing appointments, then I need to go on approximately four per month, four per week. Let's just make it one a day, cool? Raise your hand if you're okay with that. I'm okay with that. Now, if I were to tell you, you have to find someone who's interested in listing their house and schedule a listing appointment today. It is a standard. Matter of fact, Natalie, I'm gonna hire you. You're gonna work for my team. I'm gonna give you a $200,000 salary. You okay with that? Yes. You good with that? Now, here's a stipulation. You gotta schedule a listing appointment every day. Now, the first day you don't, you're fired. Okay. Still okay with that? Yeah. In other words, you pretty, you, you, you're confident you could get that, right? If I truly did what I'm supposed to do every day, without a doubt. Oh, you guys are not going to like this. <laughs> are you scheduling a listing appointment a day? No. Watch this. If you did. Oh, you're not going to like this. I'm getting my calculator out to do this. If you did, that would be 250 listing appointments in a year. If you closed 50%, that's 125 listings closed. If 50% of them sold, that's 62.5 closings. At an average, we'll make it 8,000. That's $500,000, $300,000 more than I was willing to pay you. And you're willing to do anything to get $200,000. Is this hurting? You want to turn your camera off and go hide? Why not? <laughs> <laughs> Perspective, right? It's when the pain of not getting a listing appointment is greater than the pain of making 100 calls or 200 calls or 300 calls or going out and knocking on doors or doing whatever it takes to find someone who's interested in selling their home when the pain of not getting an appointment is greater than the pain of the effort to find that appointment, you'll do it. You'll do it. Right? If you read my Facebook post this morning, you read the introduction to my new book, which in the introduction to my new book, I explained how I went from one home sold my first six months as a realtor to 60 months in the next six months, excuse me, 60 closings in the next six months. It wasn't because I all of a sudden discovered a silver bullet or a genie's lantern and I rubbed it and the genie came out and I said, uh, I've got three wishes, these are my wishes, blah, blah, blah. 
it was because the pain of not getting those listings and those closings was greater than the pain of making the calls. Prior to that, it wasn't. Prior to that, there was no pain. So I didn't make the calls. All right, I'm gonna pause for a moment. I think I rambled for about 15 minutes there. Tell me what your, what your ahas are so far before we get into lead generation. My aha is I have a goal of having X amount of cash in my bank account mm -hmm. within the next five years. And if I did what you just laid out for us, I could achieve that goal in three years yeah. without having to buy investment property. Yeah. So yeah. that was yeah. huge. Yeah. Nadine and I would, and I, I love that. Great job. And I would tell you, I'll go just one step further. I'll tell you it's a choice. Not only can you do it, whether or not you do <clears throat> will depend on the choices you make. Oh yeah. John, I just want to say, I, I sent a private message to Nadine <laughs> and I was saying that I got more from this, you know, 15, 20 minute call. Uh, oh, by the way, I'm hiding behind my picture because I look like crap right now. Um, <laughs> Not possible, Al. <laughs> Not possible, my friend. You always look like I've gotten more back to the basics in this four, 15 minutes than I have doing a, using a productivity coach from somewhere, I'll leave them nameless. But uh, you brought it back to reality, back to square one. I love the grow analogy. Thank you very much. My pleasure, man. Thank you. All right, let's move on. So <clears throat> every day you have a job. And I want you to look at it like this. If I told you your job was to schedule two appointments a day and add one person to your database a day, that's your job. And you're not allowed to go home until you do it. And it's critically important. Um, not to bring drama into the conversation and <clears throat> in order to drive this point home your life or the life of someone you love depends on it give me one second guys okay i think i've got my voice back uh this is typical for friday by friday my voice is gone it's 10 hours a day, nonstop talking. I get sick of listening to myself. <laughs> so your life or the life of someone you love depends on you getting two appointments and adding somebody to your database. Look at it like this, guys. My big why exercise that I do when I'm teaching or I'm speaking to a large group is I'll ask Nadine, you know, Nadine, if you and I were standing on opposite sides of, um, there's, a, there's a cliff here and there's a cliff here and there's a bridge that goes between the two and it drops 10,000 feet. And the bridge is kind of old, it's a rope bridge with boards between and looking at it, I'm almost positive there's wood rot, the ropes could break, the boards could break, I'm not sure you're gonna get across this bridge. However, if you can, I've got $100 for you. Are you crossing the bridge? No. Oh, of course not. Cool, let's make it a thousand. No. Yeah? How about $100,000? That's a lot of money. I mean, it's worth possibly dying over. No, it's are you, not. Are you crossing that bridge? No. I've got the neck, of someone you love and if you don't cross the bridge I'm pushing them over are you crossing the bridge uh, somehow I'm gonna find a way 
Yeah, of course you are. And and the fact that I used to be a rock climber and mountaineer would help. <laughs> well, that stuff freaks me out. I don't know how you people do that. Uh uh. No, 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 no. I don't know if you've seen the movie Cliffhanger. I can't, I can't watch the scene in Cliffhanger when she falls. I'm like, nope. Let's fast forward. I like the rest of the movie. I just don't want to see that part. So what we did is we discovered your big why. And now there's nothing that's going to stop you. Now, what if I said, same scenario, Nadine, if you schedule two appointments today and add somebody to your database, I'll give you a hundred bucks. You gonna do it? Let's make it a thousand. Probably not, no. Your life or the life of someone you love depends on it. Now you are. And if that were the case, when somebody walks up to you in the office and says, hey, got a minute. Do you? No. Do you? No. That's like the bridge. No. If somebody, if you're crossing that freaking bridge to save the life of someone you love and somebody said, hey, Nadine, did you see the posts that Natalie put on Facebook? Pop it up on your phone. You got to see what she said. Are you going to stop and look at your phone and read and look at Facebook? No, I'm holding on and I got to get across. Yes. Now, what if you worked like that? Would you get different results? Yes. You would. We all would. So would I. So your job is to get two appointments a day. And I don't care if they're going to list their home now or a year from now. It really doesn't matter. Get face to face with two people a day who you could put into your pipeline for future opportunity. Your second job is to add one person to your database every day. And all that means is, hey, Bill, John Dietz, I like to keep my friends and family members updated on the market. That means I send them interesting information on the real estate market once a month. And I call every three months. Would it be okay if I added you to that group? Okay? For sure. Yes. By the way, words matter. Because I could have said, would it be okay if I add you to that list? People don't want to be on a list. No. They don't. Somebody was posting on the Facebook pivot page the other day and, and they were kind of complaining. And they said, I made a care call and the person said, I'm not your friend, don't call me again. Oh, I'm not your client. I'm you not your client, client, don't call me again. You saw the post. Yeah. And what they said was, uh, they called the individual and they said, hello, blank, this is blank. And I'm calling everyone, I'm calling all of my customers and all of the contacts in my database. Or I'm calling all my clients and all of the contacts in my database. All right, nobody wants to be a contact in your database. That is a sales call. It's not a friend call. And my suggestion would be, hey, Natalie, John Dietz, I was thinking about you and just wanted to check in and see, how are you doing? How's your family? Is there anything I can do for you today? Now, Natalie wants to get that call. If I were to call her and say, hey, Natalie, this is John Dietz with Keller Williams Realty, and I'm reaching out to all of my clients and all of the contacts in my database. How does that feel? Cold. I'd be like, gotta go. Yes. So Guys, John some of this stuff is so simple. It makes me nuts. It really, really does. Cause I'm like, you should have just understood that. But okay. Yeah. The other way, when they said it, it sounded like they were completing an assignment. Yes. And that it was not, you know, from the heart. Yes. So that was the big difference. Raise your hand if you have a dog. Raise your hand if you have a cat. Valerie, I haven't talked to you today. Take yourself off mute. Morning. What's your dog's name? I have two. I have Fila and Levi. Levi. So let's go with Levi. So you come home. How does Levi greet you? Oh, Lord, he almost knocks me down sometimes. 
he's excited to see you. Loves me. Act like that when you call people. Now, what if Levi came over to you and said, oh, hi, mom, I'm your dog. I'm glad you're home. <laughs> Never. <laughs> no. But th that's what your cats do, by the way. That's being a cat. Don't be a cat. A cat, when you walk in the room, a cat's like, oh, yeah, you again. All right. <laughs> I know, Nadine, not all cats. Yeah, I have a cat that thinks it's a dog. Kind of weird. All right. What are you guys hearing? Other than cats and dogs, what are you hearing? Listen, if you've been on my calls for a while, at least by now, you know that Friday calls are a little bit more entertaining because I am out of gas by Friday and I get goofy when I'm just exhausted. Well, number one, be genuine. Mm. Um, and going back to the grow, are we going back all the way through the call? Yeah. Um, grow, looking at reality. Um, having a plan forward and going across that bridge was huge for me. Like uh, today I'm looking for a picture of a rickety bridge mm. so I can hang it up. Cause that was a huge visual for me. Yeah. Um, so that's what I got out of it. Yeah. Cool. It goes back to simple basic. It's not what you say. It's how you say it. And you should always be mindful of that with whoever you're speaking to. Yeah, yeah. I would say 90% is how you say it, 10% is what you say. Yeah, and the 10% matters, so learn your scripts and pay attention to the 90%. So by the way, for those of you who maybe don't know, uh, the difference between one sale in six months and, six sale, and 60 sales in the next six months is I got fired from a corporate job uh, that was paying me very well. Um, company car, bug flying in front of me, company car insurance and Monica is at home taking care of Colin and Lacey. Uh, Colin was five years old at the time. Lacey was six months old at the time. We had just bought a new home less than six months prior to me getting fired from this job. So I have bills to pay and the family to support. And I'm the only source of income in the family. <clears throat> I went from making over $200,000 a year to zero overnight. And I walked into Mark Olish's office and I said, I need you to show me how I can earn $200,000 a year selling real estate. He laid it out for me. He did uh, the, went through the economic model with me from the millionaire real estate agent and showed me exactly what I needed to do in order to earn the amount of money that I needed. And I went on to list and sell 60 homes in the next six months because I had to, not because I'm good, not because I'm better than somebody else. It's simply because I had to. Nadine, it's the bridge. It's 100% it's the bridge. For me, I was crossing the bridge. All right, how we do today, guys? We good? Awesome. All right, good stuff. Thank you. Uh, next week will be our transition week. We are transitioning to one call uh, versus two, and then we're gonna go right into lead generation. For those of you who want to be a part of a group Zoom lead gen, then you'll be able to jump right from my Survive to Thrive coaching call right into lead generation. Um, however, Monday through Friday next week, we're still on 930 every day. See you Monday. Have a great weekend, everybody.